in previous videos, we've seen the concept of structured data types, possibility of defining them as simple or collection data types, and some examples of manual loading, although we have mentioned that there's another, higher level way to perform the loading. Remember that we still have to solve a request made by the travel agency to implement a ranking of countries according to the number of tourist attractions that they offer. In other words, we must show all the countries ordered from highest to lowest by that amount. Let's see it in Genexus. We'd already created an SDT named SDT Country, which represents a single country with its corresponding identifier and name. We'll now make a save as of this object and name it SDT Countries. and define the new item, Attractions Quantity, to also be able to save the number of attractions it offers. We're going to set this structure as a collection, so we check this box labeled Is Collection. This structure that's a collection has the same members that we defined at the beginning, but grouped in a substructure called SDT Countries Item. This substructure is automatically created when we mark it as a collection. In this way, each item will store data from one country, and the collection will store the set of countries. We save this definition, and to load the data from the collection, we'll use a Genexus object of data provider type. This object allows us to load a data structure, for example, from information obtained from the database, and returns this structure already loaded. So, from Genexus, we create a data provider object, and name it Ranking Countries, with Attractions Quantity. and Genexus places us in the source section of the data provider. This is where we'll declare how we want the data to be loaded into the collection to be returned. Note how easy it is to declare the loading. What we're going to do from the KB Explorer window is simply drag the SDT country structured data type over the source of the data provider. When doing so, Genexus automatically writes several lines of text. If we open the data provider properties, we can see that Genexus assigned the name of the SDT country's collection to the output property. This means that the data provider will return a collection of SDT country's structured data type loaded with data. Since SDT countries is already a collection, it isn't necessary to configure the collection property of the data provider to true. It should be mentioned that if this collection property is set to true, the data provider will return a collection of the SDT indicated in the output property, regardless of how complex its structure may be. Let's see what Genexus wrote in the source. We recognize the name of the SDT country's structured data type, which is a collection. And then between brackets is the substructure of the collection item. Let's compare this with the structure of the SDT. We see that Genexus represented the structure of SDT countries in text form and left the member's ID, name, and attractions quantity of the substructure of SDT countries ready to load their value. If we wanted to load this structure with fixed data, for example, with France and China only, it would be enough to create two groups and assign these corresponding values. But actually, we want to load the collection from the content of the country table. Then, we must instruct the data provider to run through the table. To this end, we use the from clause, and next to it, we'll indicate the name of the transaction whose base table we want to run, as we've done to indicate the base transaction of the for each command. 
So in this case, we write from country. If the transaction had more than one level, then in order to specify a certain level associated with a certain base table that we want to navigate, we would have to write the name of the transaction, period, name of the level. For example, if the base table we want to run through is country city, then the base transaction would be country.city. Going back to our example, we'll indicate that we want to load the ID element with the value of the country ID attribute. Load the name item with the value of the country name attribute. And load the attractions quantity item with the number of tourist attractions in each country. So to this member, we assign the result of the inline formula count attraction name. Let's review a concept we've already studied. This inline formula will navigate the attraction table by the attribute we've indicated in brackets. In addition, the table navigated by the data provider, country, and the table navigated by the formula, attraction, have a common attribute that is country ID. This formula will count the attractions of the country navigated by the data provider each time. So what we've done is simply to declare a table to be navigated by the data provider, and for each record accessed, we've indicated the values we want to assign to a new item in the country collection. Since the data provider runs through the country table, we usually say that the base table of the data provider is country. The final result will be that the data of all the countries in the database, each with its number of attractions, will have been stored in the collection in memory. We'll save these changes. Remember that we already have in our knowledge base a procedure named countries ranking, so we're going to modify it. First, in the variable section, we'll define a variable, countries, based on the SDT countries data type. We then go to the procedure source. And from here, to this country's variable, we assign the result returned by the data provider that we've just created. In this way, we're invoking the data provider, and it will return a collection of countries, which will be loaded in the variable countries. If the data provider needs information to work with it, then it'll be passed in a parameter between brackets. OK. Remember that the requirement is to view a ranking of all countries ordered from highest to lowest according to the number of attractions they have registered. Therefore we still need to order the collection we got loaded. That is to say, to order the items of the collection of countries before it's shown from highest to lowest according to the number of attractions they have registered. To solve this, we have the sort method. Remember that variables or attributes have properties and methods available, depending on their data type. In the case of a collection STT, the sort method allows you to sort the collection by a particular item. The syntax is as follows. The country's variable, period, sort, and in brackets, between quotes, the name of the item by which we're going to order, which in this case is attractions quantity. But in this way, the collection of countries will be ordered from lowest to highest by the number of attractions, and we need it to be ordered from highest to lowest, because we want to implement a ranking. To indicate the reverse order, Inside the quotes, we'll add straight parentheses. Once the collection is sorted, we must run through it to show it in the print block. So we'll need to define a variable based on the element of the collection. So we define the one country variable.
it's based on the data type corresponding to the element in the collection. We go back to the source and declare the structure. For one country in countries print of the country's print block. Now let's go to the layout and insert the one country variable. Note that we've already configured the necessary properties and the rule to define the PDF format So, the request is complete. To see the ranking running, we select the Run option. And we see the PDF list with all the countries that were registered in the database, each one with its corresponding number of attractions and in the requested order. Optionally, data providers accept the WHERE clause to filter as well as the for each command. For example, if we don't want the list to include France, how would we go about it? We can add the clause where, country name, different, from France. Another way to implement the same requirement is from the STT set as simple and not as a collection. In this case, the collection must be built by the data provider, and for that, its collection property must be set to true. In this way, we're telling the data provider to return a collection of elements of SDT country type. Also, note that the collection name property is displayed, and a name has been automatically assigned to the collection. When invoking the data provider from the procedure source, we must define the country's collection variable as a collection of the structured data type SDT country. Note that the syntax used to invoke the data provider does not change, only that the variable that receives the result is based on a simple SDT. Therefore, in order to receive the collection returned by the data provider, we must declare it as a collection by selecting the isCollection checkbox. We update the changes in Genex's server. In sum, we have two ways for a data provider to return a collection of elements. One of them is to define a structured data type of collection type. After dragging it to the data provider source, it's automatically configured to return a collection of that type. The other option is to define a structured data type that is not a collection, and then setting the data provider properties to have it build the collection. In this way, we've seen the power of data providers to load information into a data structure and memory. We saw how easy it was to declare the data we wanted to load, with Genexus solving everything necessary to carry it out.